Okay, just a side note before we start today's content, because I've been doing this lately and I've actually really been enjoying it because I've been able to get more news to you guys. I like opening up some news, big news days with some smaller news. And wow, I said news a lot to open this video. But I don't know if you guys have heard, the Charlotte Hornets want to buy out their former number two overall pick, Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And he's rumored to go and sign with the Dallas Mavericks. And upon hearing this, I really scratched my head because, yeah, don't don't get it twisted. Michael K. Gilchrist is a great one-way defensive player. And I guess if you put him at the power forward position, yeah, he's pretty solid. Although he was drafted to be a small forward and had crazy def uh, offensive uh, athleticism coming out of Kentucky. I've, I've been following MKG's career since high school. And to be honest... I'm kind of surprised because if I'm Michael Kidd Gilchrist and I tweeted this out, I'm thinking, okay, you know, what's the one thing that's holding me back from being a legitimate 3 and D player or a legitimate threat in the NBA, like a very valuable role player in the NBA? And that's his jump shot. And who recently just fixed one of the most ugliest jump shots in the entire NBA? Well, that'd be Fred Vincent of the New Orleans Pelicans. So if I'm Michael K. Gilchrist, why wouldn't I sign with the New Orleans Pelicans? Why wouldn't I be blowing up Fred Vincent's uh, line? Why wouldn't I be blowing up David Griffin's uh, phone saying, get me on this team. I don't care if I don't play a single minute. Just get me on this team. I That is just something I was thinking about. They could easily reconstruct his jump shot. He could be a completely different player next year. Why wouldn't you go and sign with the Pelicans? That's my bit. Let me know in the comment section. Maybe there's something. <laughs> maybe there's something off here. It's just a thought that occurred in my mind. I tweeted it out. I wanted to put it in my videos because I don't really talk to a lot of y'all on Twitter very much. Oh boy, we have some legitimate Twitter drama. I understand. A week ago, I said John Morant and Damian Lillard got into an exchange on Twitter and I even called it a heated exchange but bro this is a freaking heated exchange okay and it's to be expected considering the fact that the people that are in the midst of the Twitter drama are two extremely competitive players we're talking about Damian Lillard and Donovan Mitchell and we're talking about one side feeling that they got completely hoed in the middle of the game as a result of a no call which they did if you if you want to be honest they did and if you don't know what i'm talking about well the portland trailblazers faced off against the utah jazz on friday night and it was a crazy game it was very intense but this one layup that damian lillard had ended up being goaltended and it was a no call by the refs and at the end of the game it was very clear well in the midst of the game it was very clear but at the end of the game they actually officially said that they missed the call and it was their bad and obviously Damian Lillard didn't really like that very much because he felt that it cost them the game and it, you can make the argument that it did because the Utah Jazz won by three 117 to 114 and obviously when you're Damian Lillard and the Portland Trailblazers you have a 24 to 29 um, win-loss record. The Utah Jazz have 33 wins and 18 losses. You need as many freaking wins as you possibly can, man, because you're barely, barely, barely getting by in the Western Conference. And that's to be expected because I don't know if you guys remember, but the Portland Trailblazers started out very, very poorly this season. They made some additions to make things better in Portland and give Damian Lillard a chance at making the playoffs, but they started out very poorly. I thought this was going to be a lottery team and they were about to trade C J McCollum and all that stuff back earlier in the season. Now, of course, this went on to social media. And before I show you guys all that stuff, guys, if you watch a lot of my content, please take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications. I bring you guys daily NBA news. This is my full time job now. And once we get to 24,000 followers on Instagram, I am going to be giving away a signed Kobe Bryant jersey. Follow me on TikTok at the Flight Mike if you want to see my workouts, which is the same as my Twitter and the same as my Facebook. And if you like football content, check out my football channel, Microphone. You guys like how I got that down in about 20 seconds? I think I'm improving here. So let me show you what happened. So on Twitter, there's this report released, and it pretty much says the pool report on the potential goaltend at the end of the Trailblazers at Jazz Game. Interview conducted by Jamie Hudson with crew chief Josh Tiven following tonight's Portland Trailblazers at Utah Jazz Game. And the question was, was Damian Lillard shot reviewable for a goaltend and if so why was it not reviewed and 
The answer was no, it was not reviewable since there was no goaltending call made on the floor. Goaltending is only reviewable if we actually call it. The call needs to be made for a goaltending to be reviewable. We've since looked at it via post game review and unfortunately saw that we missed the play and a goaltending violation should have been called. Now, if you, Damian Lillard um, responds to this, but if you personally ask me, this is why the challenge flag was brought to the NBA. This should be a play that could be challenged. And the fact that they couldn't challenge it, I don't remember, I don't know if the Blazers had a challenge to even challenge it or if goaltends are even challengeable. I think it should be something that is challengeable. And Damian Lillard, of course, being very upset in the competitive player that he is, quote tweets it saying, we don't want to hear this. Well, I'm trying not to curse on the channel, but you guys could read it. So, of course, Damian Lillard is really, really, really upset about the situation. It's pretty much the, the thing I'm trying to get over to you guys before I give you Donovan Mitchell's response. Now, in a post-game interview, Donovan Mitchell actually went ahead to say that he really didn't appreciate Gary Trent Jr.'s in-game trash talking and it's it's more of a respect thing mainly because donovan mitchell considers himself to be one of the top tier players in the league and with all due respect gary trent jr is literally in his second year in the league so i guess the trash talk kind of got underneath donovan mitchell's skin but that's kind of what trash talk is supposed to do because donovan mitchell comes out and says at the end of the game i don't see why a guy like gary trent should come in and think he can punk us we're not a team that you can come in and just talk trash to. We're not going to back down. That's what we kind of lack the past few games. Just toughness. And of course, this is this is where things get entertaining. This is the reason you clicked on the video. Get your popcorn out because, of course, Damian Lillard responded to Donovan Mitchell and defended Gary Trent Jr. All he said is, man, stop, dot, dot, dot. But obviously there's something to it donovan mitchell comes back and quote tweets damian lillard and says i said what i said and gary trent being the greatest instigator of all time comes out and just says lol with three emojis man this is such a millennial argument but after that donovan mitchell comes out and clears the air and says man ain't not disrespect ain't no beef I'm not finna let Gary Trent talk uh, talk mess, and that's just what it is. And I could understand that. You know, Damian Damian Lillard is probably coming from a perspective of, listen, bro, we're the, you're the guys that got the win. We got the loss. Could you stop complaining about someone talking trash to you? Like, could you? Who cares what Gary Trent said? Why are you upset? We're the ones that got hoed here. We're the ones that took the loss when we were supposed to at least have a chance to win. We're the ones that got uh, had a no call completely take the game away from us. Damian Lillard, if you ask me, if I have to choose a side here, I'm taking Damian Lillard's side. You know, like Damian Lillard is clearly upset about what happened and the result of the game. And at the end of the day, what matters the most is getting the win. And Donovan Mitchell and the Utah Jazz got the win. And it just seems like he's nitpicking at this point. You shouldn't be that upset about it. It's crazy, though, because Damian Lillard, we all know, has been on a tear lately. He scored 42 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists in the game. And the disappointing loss was extremely crucial once again for the Portland Trailblazers because they're in an extremely tight battle to make it to the playoffs. They're two and a half games behind the eighth seeded Memphis Grizzlies, and they pretty much need every win that they can get. Now, of course, there's two, there's like three months left, two to three months left before the NBA playoffs start. So there's still time to make up that ground. And of course, the Portland Trailblazers are trending upward, but I can understand the frustration Damian Lillard is facing. Meanwhile, Donovan Mitchell, I do think he's just complaining to complain. He just wants people to put respect on his name. And that's very understandable considering the fact that he is a recent new face of the league. This is his third year in the NBA. And this is the first year the Utah Jazz are actually considered to be contenders. Well, I wouldn't say contenders, but actually have respect. You have to bear in mind that the Utah Jazz went from a cellar dweller to a team that has a good enough record to potentially make their way to second in the Western Conference or a team that could potentially just stay at number four in the Western Conference. But at the same time, you have to bear in mind, they're only like four games back from second place. They can easily go 
up or down here because the Western Conference playoff race is extremely tight from the fourth seed to the seventh seed. But more or less, this is the first, now that the Utah Jazz are up there, you're, they're being mentioned in the same breath as the Houston Rockets, as the Los Angeles Clippers, which is very strange, as the Dallas Mavericks, as the OKC Thunder. They clearly have a presence in the Western Conference playoffs. Now, let me know in the comment section down below, whose side are you on here? Do you think Damian Lillard makes a good point? Do you agree with Donovan Mitchell's perspective that, you know, a, a bench player shouldn't talk mess to him? Or do you think he's just being petty and picky and nitpicky and he should just be happy that he got the win and move on? Aside from that, guys, I, I'm going to be live streaming the XFL games on microphone today. I'm your boy, The Flight Mike, and I'll catch you guys in the next upload.